Hi guys, welcome back to Old Man Jacob Photography. This week we're going to take a look at popular photo stacking options and comparing them so that I can make a recommendation as to what you should be using for macro photography. But first I want to talk real quick about why focus stacking software is even needed in the first place. We see when you're using a macro lens at very extreme magnification, your depth of field, or in other words, where your photo starts being in focus to the point that it starts being out of focus, gets very, very small. Sometimes only a few pieces of paper thick. So if we wanna get more of our subject in focus, what we need to do is take a series of photos all focused on different points of our subject. We can then use software after the fact to take all these focus slices and turn them into one image with a deeper depth of field. Now this blending is called focus stacking and is done using software. The most popular options are Photoshop, Helicon Focus, and Zarine Stacker. So we're gonna briefly take a look at the stacking process in each of those, and then we're gonna compare some of the results. Now if you wanna know more about the actual stacking process itself, make sure to subscribe because I have an upcoming tutorial. Okay, so stacking in Photoshop is done by going to File, scripts, and then load files into stack. Here you can browse for the files that you want to stack. Select some, hit OK. Make sure that this attempt to automatically align sources box is checked, and then hit OK. So it'll load all of these into layers. All right, there we go. Uh, once they've loaded, you select all layers, you go to edit, auto blend layers, make sure stack images is the option that you're selected on, and hit OK. It'll think for a little bit, and it will give you a stacked image. Alright, and there we go. Alright, to do a stack in Helicon, what you're going to do is go to File, Open Images, uh, find the images that you want to use. Go ahead and select them, open. Uh, Helikin gives three different rendering methods. Uh, I always recommend that you try all three. What you'll do is select a rendering method, hit render, and it will render your image. Left side is before, right side is after. You then go to the next one, render. It'll do a different method, and then you go to the third one, render, and do a different method. Zarine Stacker is done by going to File, Add Files, selecting the files that you want and hitting Open. And then you're going to Stack, Align, and Stack All. And then you just wait. It will run two different processes. It'll give you a Pmax and Dmap output uh, when it's done. And we are going to be looking at both of those uh, outputs along with all three of the Helicon outputs and the Photoshop output here in a minute. All right, and there you go. Uh, right side is the after, and there's our two different outputs. At this point, I should probably also mention that each of these pieces of software also has a plugin that works with Lightroom to import these photos directly into the pieces of software. So I've prepared five different focus brackets, which I've ran through all the modes of all three pieces of software. So let's take a look at the results. Okay, so first we're gonna take a look at this earwig. I have all these layers labeled over here. Uh, this is the Photoshop layer. Let's zoom in a little bit. Here is Helicon Focus method C. And you'll see what happens to his body right along this line. This is a problem with the Photoshop version. It has misaligned the layers. You can also see a little bit of blurring here on the Photoshop version. Anyways, there's Helicon Focus version C, B, A, Zarine Stacker P Max, and Zarine Stacker D Map. So uh, the, the biggest problems with this one are with Photoshop. Uh, if you compare that to any of the other ones, you can see 
the sort of warping between the layers. Uh, the best result out of all of these, in my opinion, um, was either Helicon Focus Method C or Zarene Stacker DMAP. Um, I went through these earlier. That's how I know without looking too close. Um, my absolute favorite out of all of them uh, was Helicon Focus Method C on this specific image. Okay, next we have a ladybug. Here's the uh, Photoshop layer, which again, you will see has a little bit of warping compared to other software. You see when I turn that on and off. Okay, uh, that's Helicon method C, method B, method A, Zarene Stacker Pmax, and Zarene Stacker DMAP. Uh, you'll notice on Zarene Stacker DMAP, it got a lot of weird artifacts back in this kind of area. You see that? Um, and it's on the other side of the shell as well. Uh, so the DMAP did not work very good on this. Um, the PMAX worked all right. Um, and Helicon Focus Method C is, again, my favorite. Um, the PMAX is also not a bad option, though. Okay, so on this image of a stack spider, um, we've got, if we run through these, there's Helicon Focus B, Helicon Focus A. Uh, if you look on uh, Helicon Focus B, A, uh, there's some sort of strange artifacts going on around the legs. You see that? Uh, where method C doesn't have that. You see? Strange artifacts. Uh, DMAP from Zarene Stacker also has those artifacts. PMAX did a fairly good job, but looks a little washed out as Zarene Stacker usually does. Uh, Helicon Focus is probably a little oversaturated looking, but I like that. It doesn't really have artifacts. Uh, and Photoshop actually did a nice job on this as well. Okay, so on this Weevil, I did not have a very steady hand taking a picture of the stack. Uh, surprisingly, Photoshop did pretty well with what I gave it. Helicon Focus, method C, did not work. Method B, did not work. Method A, did not work. So Helicon Focus was unable to process this stack as I fed it. I would have had to align these in Photoshop before sending them in to Helicon. Uh, there is Zarene Pmax and Zarene DMAP. Uh, if you look at the two of them, you could sort of make your own call as to which you think is better. Uh, but you can definitely see a huge difference in the background. Um, there are some weird artifacts here on the DMAP version that I'm not too fond of. I personally think that Zarene Stacker PMAX wins this round. Okay, and now we have another image uh, where the web was blowing pretty harshly as I was taking these pictures. Uh, so a very misaligned stack. Um, if we go to Helicon Focus, version C, you can see the spider doesn't look terrible, but this web is trippy. B is roughly the same. A is roughly the same. Uh, they're different versions of the same problem. Zarene Stacker PMAX uh, does a fairly good job of keeping the web together. DMAP looks great. Uh, so the winner for this round, I think, is Zarene Stacker DMAP. But I think that Photoshop is a very close second. Um, and PMAX probably gets third place. Helicon Focus did not 
place at all. So as you might have been able to tell from the examples, Helicon Focus really shines when you have a steady hand. Zareen Stacker shines when you have a really deep stack or an unsteady hand. And Photoshop uh, works excellently when you have very misaligned or very poorly aligned stacks. I also want to mention that all three pieces of software do have ways to retouch and fix problems. They are all a little time consuming, but you can get great results with any of them as long as you're willing to put in the time. So before we sum things up and I give my final recommendations, we also need to consider the cost. So Helicon Focus starts at $30 and goes up to a one-time fee of $200 for professionals. Serene Stacker starts at $39 for students and goes all the way up to a one-time fee of $289 for professionals. And you can get Photoshop with Lightroom in a photography bundle, which is $19.99 a month, or you can pay that at $239.98 per year. So what are my recommendations? First, as a photographer, most of you are probably already using Photoshop and Lightroom. If you're not, I would highly recommend getting these first because they are useful for much more than just focus stacking. You can also achieve great results focus stacking using masks as long as you're willing to put in the time. But let's say you already have Photoshop and you're looking at either adding Zareen or Helicon into the mix. Which one should you get then? Well, both of them have advantages and disadvantages. Helicon is excellent at preserving color and creating beautiful images as long as your stacks are aligned really well. Uh, on the flip side, it starts to have a lot of issues when your photos aren't aligned well and you're going to have to go back and recrop them or use Photoshop to align them before you feed them into Helicon. Serene Stacker, on the other hand, creates very sharp images and is very good at handling really deep stacks. Uh, it's also pretty good at aligning photos when you didn't have the steadiest of hands. Where it has a drawback, though, is with color. Um, I never get as good of color preservation in Zareen Stacker as I do in Helican. So both of them have excellent retouching abilities. Uh, Helican can process raw files, and Zareen can process slabs for really deep stacks. Um, other than that, they're, they're mostly equivalent with what features they offer. So half of macro photographers are using Helicon, and half of them swear by Zareen. So who's right? Well, they both are. Both pieces of software are excellent at producing great images, uh, but they will each outshine the other one depending on what focus bracket you feed them. So I personally use Helicon Focus as a first choice, but things don't always work out in there, so sometimes I end up sending them to Zareen Stacker. If they still don't work out, then I can usually force them to work out the way I want in Photoshop. So my recommendation, if you could afford it, would be to buy both. But if you can't afford it or you don't want to buy both, what I would recommend is downloading the trial. Each of these pieces of software offers a 30-day trial, so you can download them and use them side-by-side side on the same stacks and see which one works better for you. Uh, you really can't make a bad decision here. Uh, both of them will work incredibly well and produce very quality images as long as you're willing to put in the time and effort uh, when you're dealing with one of the pieces of software's weakness as far as stack preparation goes. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a like so I know I'm doing a good job. Make sure to subscribe because I'm working on a complete beginner macro tutorial that you won't want to miss. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.